My name is Noelle McNeil. I'm 26 years old. Growing up, I was very fit, very into working out, going, being lifeguard. I ran track all throughout high school, three sport athlete, indoor, outdoor, and cross country. And then from there, I decided to go to James Madison University in Virginia. And then I, finished, I did my first two years there. I graduated high school in 03, so it was right after that. Um, and then in the summer between my sophomore and junior year was when I had my accident. Noelle was a typical young lady uh, growing up in the suburbs. Uh, she, you know, we're a middle class family and she had uh, exposure to quite a, quite a lot of interests. Uh, she was always involved in athletics, uh, very, very athletic. She liked sports, she followed in her brother's footsteps. At around five or six years old, she became exposed to horseback riding. So I began riding when I was six. As I got older, we transferred to a more competitive barn, and I got really into it there because I saw that I could end up being really competitive. So that was how I pursued my horse, Redwood. I showed him all over the place. I loved him. And then it became the desire to find a school that had an equestrian program because I didn't, I thought I would be riding until I'm 85 years old. Little did I know. I received the phone call that there had been a terrible fall from Noelle's dad um, at about 9.15 in the morning. Uh, I could, first of all, my daughter had ridden since she was six years old and I had never gotten a phone call like that before. So I knew this was very serious. I could tell from the tone of his voice that it was serious. And um, I heard myself screaming. I heard myself just screaming um, because I, I knew that it meant A, she was gonna die or, or B, there was some kind of terrible life-altering injury going on here, especially they told me she was in a helicopter. So you, you don't get in a helicopter unless you're, you're very, very critical. So uh, we went to the hospital and um, the name of the game at that point was get there while she was still alive because it was very much in question how long she was gonna stay alive. They were wheeling her out of the MRI and there's, there's this very wonderful doctor with her who had met her at the helicopter and she just looked like she was asleep. You know, this beautiful young woman is just laying on this gurney and she just looked like she was asleep, but she was 100% unresponsive. You know, I said to her, Noel, I'm here, I'm here. Nothing, nothing. They made it clear beyond doubt that this was a very, very serious injury and that no promises and no expectations were being discussed at that time. Um, they. It was a situation where, uh, I mean, the, the immediate good news that we got was that her spinal cord was clean. We, we feared a spinal cord injury. Um, we didn't even think of a brain injury. That never entered the, certainly didn't enter my thought process, but the spine was clear. So we thought, okay, great, we're out of the woods. Uh, but the doctors weren't acting like that. So it, you know, like, like I say, to speak for myself only, I figured, okay, it'll be a few days and she'll have a bad headache and, and, and life will go on. Uh, I was very wrong about that. She had sustained um, a DAI, which is a diffuse axonal injury. Very, very serious brain injury. It disrupts virtually all function. The prognosis is horrifying. Um, only 3% of people who sustain a DAI make any recovery whatsoever. Uh, most of them remain comatose or minimally conscious for the rest of their lives. Only 1% make a significant recovery, and thank God, um, Noel is part of that 1%. You never left the hospital when you weren't crying. I mean, every day we left the hospital, you cried, because she was staying there. And this one particular night, um, I blew kisses at her. I just made kissing sounds, and she did it back. And we went back and forth for about five or six times. And that was, you know, that was to me when she was starting to come, come back. It's very strange, and this is part of what I really want to get out is that your eyes open, but there's there's not really the acknowledgement of who you are, the situation you're in, and where you can go from here. So I was absolutely terrified at the unknown of it. So subsequent to her gradually coming around, um, she couldn't walk, she couldn't talk, she couldn't feed herself, nothing. Uh, there was a just incredible journey that began to uh, reclaim Noelle and help her to reclaim herself and help her to regain all these skills that we all take for granted that we're now out the window. Her energy level was always very, very good. Uh, we gave her our own versions of physical therapy. Uh, we stood her up in the bed before, uh, you know, aside from the bed and 
let go and let she fall. We'd catch her and we did that and then we had she would stand for 10 seconds and then she would stand for 30 seconds and this went on a little bit at a time and then before you know it she's taken three steps and fallen into your lap and uh, the staff were looking at us like we were half crazy. Um, but we, we did it and we made a game of it. Um, you know, we would convince Noelle that she was doing leg lifts and she wasn't really back with us and we'd count and lift her legs up one, two, and because she was always an exercise nut. So uh, we, we continue that. That's what we, that's what we did as a family. Uh, we were always like that before the injury and we continued that thereafter. And it went from there to walking down the halls and, and you know, you can imagine whatever little games you can make up to just occupy the time and occupy her and get her muscles moving so things wouldn't atrophy. The day they told me I was leaving, I didn't believe them. It's almost like when anything happens that's different from what you're used to, you throw up your barriers and you say no. And I was just, because that was all I had known at that point. I, I thought I was going to reside in a hospital for the rest of my life. And so then we began uh, doing all kinds of therapy at home. Uh, we have a treadmill. and. I would put her on the treadmill and I would stand behind her and she had to like hold on really tight and we would make her do the treadmill. At first she could only do it for 30 seconds, then she could do it for a minute. By the end of the week she was doing it for five minutes. And we went back to JFK for the outpatient. They could not believe that this kid had been on the treadmill. As Noelle began to become more and more aware of her surroundings and recover more and more, she still had a long way to go. but. She didn't realize how much, and we certainly didn't realize how much this was new to all of us. Um, so she wanted to, like any 20-year-old would, would want to do, she wanted to as quickly as possible resume her, her, her normal life. And that normal life was for her to go back to college. We decided what's the worst thing that's going to happen. So she takes the course and, and we see what happens. So she did. And the course was a combination of a physical uh, exercise course and a nutrition course and she did extremely well. So then we dared take two courses and eventually Noelle, her mind was very much re redeveloped and reclaimed by the incredible effort she put in at school. And then eventually she took three courses and the Monmouth University was wonderful to her. The professors were wonderful, disability services was wonderful. So she step by step, slowly but surely regained those cognitive skills and went back to college. Throughout a process like this, there's a lot of just get through this day, days. And uh, you don't know where they're going to take you. And so, yes, she's driving, she graduated college. And uh, here we are today, she's you know, starting a, a job. It's not just a job, it's, it's, it's something I think is uniquely suited for her. Um, she speaks from experience, she's an incredible person. And uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a loss for words. It's, it's, it's just, this is the latest. And, and, and many, many steps that she has taken that has just blown me away, and I'm sure it's not the last. Upon meeting Noelle, we really felt that we could really create a connection between what she went through and what she could help us do in terms of connecting with patients and families and starting to provide them with hope that, yes, you can come back from an injury as devastating as the one she experienced. So we really started to formulate in our minds that bringing Noelle in and making her uh, a real integral part of our program and the delivery of that program, really centering her with patients and families was going to be really a key to growing our program, making it more successful, and giving Noelle an opportunity that we think she'll be great at. I'm excited to, to I dare say expertise in that area. I feel that I'm an expert in coming back from especially neuroscience injury, but any type of an injury really, any type of injury where you're going, your, your able body is now different than it was before. And it's the new adjusting to life, adjusting how people treat you. I think what happens sometimes is all of us in the administration of programs and uh, those of us who work on the clinical side of the operation really sometimes tend to forget that sometimes the best eyes to be seen in terms of how to improve the program and make sure that you're doing all you can for the patients and families actually comes from those people who have experienced that personally. And uh, Noelle's experienced that personally. She's been through every leg of this journey alone. Her family has been there with her and she really sees it through a different vein than, than physicians or administrators might. Uh, we think that's a powerful story. We also think it's a real benefit for us as we continue to promote and grow and uh, create some name recognition for the neurosciences program at Meridian Health.